Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our transfer common app walkthrough for the 2023 to 2024 academic year. Um, my name is Annie and I work at service to school. We're going to start off by logging into our application. As you remember, we go to commonapp.org and then we hit transfer student and we log in with our username and password. In this section, um, we are going to complete academic history. We completed personal information in the previous section if you're looking for, or in the previous video if you're looking for that. Here in academic history, um, we're going to go through all things related to high school and college or previous college experience. Uh, and the first thing you'll do is fill out your high school. So adding a high school is very, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it will ask you for the country and then you can narrow down by zip city, state, and then your start date. Um, so if we do, it'll give you a list of schools um, in that zip code, and then you'll put in when you started high school and when you finished high school, and then you can save it. You can add a number of high schools here. So if you've worked from, or if you've moved from one place to another and you attended more than one high school, you can, um, add more than one high school. And then there's also an opportunity to add your homeschool uh, as in the organization that facilitated your homeschooling and then the dates that you attended. So I added my high school and as you can see, you can add a second one. You'll select whether you graduated with your high school diploma or your GED. Um, and it's going to, if you select that you graduated with your high school diploma, it's going to give you the, a drop down with the high school that you attended. So if you have more than one there, you'll choose the one that you actually graduated from and then the year that you received that diploma. If you uh, did a GED, it'll ask when that GED was completed. So I'll save that. It will also confirm your graduation date. Colleges attended. So information here, um, what it says here is essentially uh, you want to list every school that you attended. Um, so whether there were gaps in your attendance, uh, places you transferred transferred coursework from. So even if you have coursework on transcript two that includes um, courses from, you know, community college number one, you want to make sure that you are listing, you're being thorough and you're listing all institutions. And um, even if your coursework is not um, related to what you'd like to study or relevant to what you'd like to study now, you again, you want that ascent, you want that um, complete and thorough list for schools. Um, list them once and just know that you can't edit your previous college list. You can only add new schools and update the ones that you're still attending. Okay. Um, so what you would do here is you add a school. So you can add, for example, example, I uh, added Nassau Community College. And then you, when you hit save, it takes you back to this page. Um, I added two schools, Nassau and Kingsborough, and it's reminding me that for the schools that I plan to apply to, uh, the four-year schools I plan to apply to, they need my official transcripts from every school that I've attended. Uh, the way that they're getting this information is from the program. So in the first video, I said that this is not something you have to complete now. However, it does help you to have um, it does help to kind of check your work as you're going through. So it's reminding me that I have added Harvard as the school that I plan to apply to and Harvard requires uh, transcripts from both of these schools. Um, what happens next, so once you've added the schools, all the schools that you've attended, it will take you into college coursework. Oh, and I just wanna point out that it does have a link here to order your uh, electronic transcript. So all schools will need um, a copy of your transcript, the four-year school. So you, it's pretty handy that they have that built in um, and lets you know how to order those transcripts. Okay, once you've added all the colleges, it's going to ask you now to list all the courses you took at those schools. This section is, is fairly um, uh, time consuming. So don't leave it for the last minute. So the way it would, works is it'll show you the schools that you've added, and then you have to um, add courses to them. So you would start off by adding your course. It's going to say, 
going to ask for the course code, the name of the class, the subject, the credits, and the grades. This you should be copying directly from a copy of your transcript. So you should have an unofficial copy of your transcript that you're working off of, and it should be accurate. I'm, I've only added three courses here, but you can add as many as, as you took when you were at that school. And I had also added, I listed that I was at Nassau for two semesters. And so you can also add courses for that second semester, right? So this is uh, fall of 2026 and here is winter of 2007. So I'm gonna cancel that. And you can see winter 2007, I can add a course. Um, you know, it can be math 200. I'm just writing, I'm writing the course title. I'm just writing the name of the, the subject, but they actually want the proper name of the class. So do not do what I'm doing. You want to make sure you're going back to that transcript and um, writing what the actual name of that course is. And then the subject would be math. Let's say it was four credits at the institution I was. Let's say I got an A in it, and then I saved that. So that's what that looks like. Um, and you should list every class that you took and be as accurate um, and as detailed as possible. There's a video down here if you need um, help filling this section out. So we've done that, let's say, for Nassau, but I also attended Kingsborough. So you can go here and do the same thing. So I just wanted to show you what it would look like if I had to put in the same class. Um, so let's say in fall of 2009, I took chemistry. Again, you would write the actual course name. Uh, and let's say I failed that class. Um, and then I retook it in winter of 2010 and I got a C. So you are able to do that. You're able to list courses more than once. Yep, so that's what that looks like. Now, if you go back to college coursework, you will see that it asks you to review and finalize your transcripts. So this section is actually not complete until you've done that step. I also want to show you down here that it says that these schools, the schools I'm applying to um, right now, which is it's only Harvard, needs a full transcript entry. So you do have to complete this entire section in order for your application to be complete for Harvard and any other school you plan to apply to. So let's do that. Let's do review and finalize my transcripts. Your transcripts will re be reviewed by a quality assurance team and it your coursework should be entered exactly as it appears on the transcript. Let's get started. Let's say that you don't, it doesn't, I don't think it really matters. If you had to repeat, yes, let's say we repeated chemistry. Select your repeated courses below. So that's the chem. Courses should be marked repeated only if repeated at the same institution. If you took a course at and then later it should not be remarked completed. Okay, so in, in my case, I did take chemistry twice at Kingsborough. Did you receive credit for any advanced placement exams? Let's say, yes, I did. Let's say I received credit or I am using, um, well, the, I wouldn't select this, but um, right now for the purposes of our demonstration, but if your course, if you receive the credit on your transcript, you, you can get that, you can mark that as sort of like advanced placement. So I'm not going to mark it, but again, do whatever um, is on your transcript. Did you receive credit for any additional? So this is where you could uh, write your CLEP or your IB uh, regions if you live in a state that offers those. So you can mark yes if you have that, and it would be the same thing. Uh, you probably you'd mark on the tr um, transcript itself what they were. Let's say you didn't take any honors classes and you did not study abroad. Okay, so essentially they want to gather all the credit that you have, whether that is from a community college or another four year school, um, whether that was uh, like advanced placement courses or dual enrollment courses that you did when you were in high school, uh, CLEPS or any other um, uh, coursework that that where you received the credit, you want to mark all of that on your transcript that's on the Common App. It, it should mirror your actual transcript. So let's go to the next section. And this is where you're going to write um, your GPA. So let's go into Kingsborough. And it says enter your GPAs. Add a GPA. So this is at the undergraduate level. Let's say I think at Kingsborough I took and I got 
C, I think, in that class. So let's say two, and I save that. Okay, so that's my GPA at Kingsborough, and I forgot my coursework. Let's see if I can see it really quickly. Preview this transcript. I got three Bs, a C, and an A. Add a GPA here, add a GPA, undergraduate. So you would take this right off your transcript. So let's say my GPA turns out to be a 2.5. Let's say that I got uh, 20 credits. Um, and you would save that. So no need to worry about the quality points or anything. All you need to do is put in your credit hours and your GPA that will come right off of your transcript. And that's that. And you wanna review this information. So again, this is something that you can't change once it's been entered. Regarding standardized tests, um, you can choose to add a test. Um, our general, piece of advice is since most testing is optional now since the start of the pandemic, uh, you should obviously check the school's policy. But since most testing is optional now, we don't necessarily recommend that you share any previous testing that you've had. So let's say you took the SAT and you were, when you were in high school and high school was four years ago. Um, these test scores are generally considered to be accurate for up to five years. After that, um, college is really they would take it with a huge grain of salt. And so if your test score is not um, high, and by high, we mean if it's not in the middle, at the high end of the middle 50% for schools, um, we would not recommend submitting that score. Uh, so you don't really have to share this information with schools. Uh, that's why I'm marking, I'm not adding any standardized tests. Um, if you did take something like the AccuPlacer, which is a placement exam, uh, usually used to help you make sure you're placed in the right class when you um, start at your new school and you have a score, you're welcome to submit that. But generally, I would say if you don't have a score that's really great and accurate in the last year or so, you don't have to submit it. Um, and of course, this is only accurate. This is only true for schools that don't require testing. If you apply to a school that requires testing, like MIT, for example, you need to submit. You know, you need to write what that score was in order for your application to be complete. And that's where you would fill out this SAT section. So we've opted not to share um, any test scores. And then here are continuing education courses. You can add any that you've earned. These are usually uh, job training or other skills that um, where you've taken a course. So here, Amazon Web Services this is a pretty popular one um, that I added. And it does ask for the name of the course, the organization where you earned it, um, number of hours completed, when you completed it. And you do also have to upload a copy of your certificate. Um, I added the addendum here. So that's this is not accurate, obviously. But just to show you what that looks like, this is really applicable to uh, those of you who have um, kind of IT certifications or um, other training, job training that requires CEUs, you can list all that here. SAT subject tests. Um, subject tests are not um, offered anymore. They stopped that maybe three years ago now. So if you have an SAT subject test score that you want to share, you're welcome to. Again, it's not super valid if it hasn't been taken in the last couple of years. And obviously, because it's no longer offered, you probably haven't taken one recently. Um, so you can feel free to do that if you'd like. And it's pretty straightforward to do that. But I, I think most of you won't have that. So you can choose zero. You can do blank. Either one works. And then we'll continue to the next section. These are secondary leaving examinations. These are exams that are usually given to um, students outside of the U.S. Um, so it's pretty common that if you're if you went to high school in the U.S., you don't have an exam like this. For those of you who graduated high school outside of the U.S., um, this is where you can list scores for things like um, your A-levels or uh, your um, ISCs. So here are the lists of leaving examinations. There is also an IB uh, diploma 
option. So if you did do an IB curriculum in high school here in the US or abroad, um, you can list those scores here. But for most of you, I believe uh, you will not have to fill that section out. All right, and then the last section of this part is your community-based organizations. These are organizations that help with um, applying to college. They are free. It should not be an organization that you pay for. So Service to School is a CBO, a community-based organization. Um, so you can, there are many different kinds. Um, so you can choose how many you worked with. Um, and then the one that you receive the most help with, it will ask you to list a contact information for that person. So Service to School, I've listed my colleague Sydney here. Note that none of this is required. So if you don't have a phone number for that person, that's totally fine. Um, if you don't wanna share that person's information, that's also fine. It does help us if you select the school um, uh, that, or the organization that you worked with. Uh, so I would love it if you submitted service to school as your CBO, um, that kind of gives a little bit more information to Common App about how many applicants are using service to school. And let's say that you also did a Warrior Scholar Project, they're also here as well, so you can list them. And then you save uh, that section. And now we're on to the third piece of the application. I hope you found this section helpful. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me at Annie at service to school org, and I can go into um, more depth uh, if you have any questions about academic history. Thanks.